How long have you been reporting on sport for the BBC Radio Lancashire? Well, my first game was uh, 1998, April. I'd previously done a game uh, working for Radio Manchester at Carlisle United. I was based at Radio Cumbria and I did a game uh, up at Carlisle United. In fact, I did, they did two games up there and I did a couple of non-league games uh, covering Gretna, who no longer exists now. And then my first opportunity of actually covering a proper football match was when I started working here and that was in April or 1998, so quite a long time ago now. And that was a, a really horrendous experience because I went all the way down to Luton Town to cover Burnley and my car was towed away from the ground because I didn't feel as though I, I was able to get up and move it because uh, uh, I had a lot of commitments on the day to, to cover and um, so when I came back after the game having done my post-match interview I had no car I had to go all the way to Luton Airport to retrieve my car uh, which cost me £120 which I paid for myself I didn't, didn't uh, ch charge the BBC um, just out of interest and that um, was in you know 1998 so that was quite a bit of money I also messed up the post-match interview and I misidentified the only goal scorer on the day and I also forgot to commentate on the goal. So all in all, it was a pretty poor experience, but that was my first game, April 1998, so quite a while ago now. What has changed since you started all them years ago? Oh, goodness me, a lot has changed. Uh, a lot has changed. The way that we deal with managers has changed in, in terms of when I first started, we did what we call check calls. So if, you, if you're a news reporter, you would, on a daily basis, ring the fire brigade, the police, the ambulance service to get any breaking stories. These days, the police, if they've got a story, they'll just put it on, on the internet and you'll pick up that story. Back then, we did a similar thing with football. So I would start my day when I got in, well, I was often on an early shift, but by nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, I would ring the managers individually. So I would ring, I would ring Nigel Worthington at Blackpool, I would ring Stan Turner at Burnley, I would also ring uh, John Williams, who happened to be the chief executive, later became the chairman at Blackburn Rovers, to get any stories to talk about uh, potential signings, things that were in the papers that day. In this day and age, we don't have that same access to managers and chairmen anymore, so we have to go through a regimented, regulated press setup, which is the press officer, so we, we tend to go there first, and of course they then control the information that you get. So the days of getting scoops and getting um, information that no one else has got because it's all over the internet those days are few and far between now it's much more difficult to try and get an exclusive or an interesting story that nobody else has got because it's all over twitter and it's all over the internet within within seconds as a media outlet do you think radio has changed as much as tv has i think it probably has yeah just about uh, if you think from, from a, a professional point of view from me actually working on radio when I first started, we'd only just got rid of reel-to-reel -reel tape. In fact, when I worked at Radio Manchester in the very early days and at Radio Cumbria, a lot of the stuff that I did was on reel-to-reel -reel tape. So I, I would I would be there with a, a razor blade and, 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 and tape to you know actually stick the, the bits of uh, interview together. That was all put on carts and it was played out. Um, the days of computers were uh, yeah, computer editing with things like Radio Mation, Radio Man, Cool Edit Pro those sort of programs, they were you know, they were a distant dream and yet we do all our editing now on those software packages so that, that's that been a big change and when I first started doing football and cricket and other sports social media was non-existent, I mean the social media, the, it, it was a phrase that, that crept in gradually say four, five to ten years ago probably even less than that. Um, prior to that, I'd, I'd never heard of social media. Uh, I was a little bit of a Luddite when it came to, to Twitter. I've been on Twitter now for four years, believe it or not, um, and I don't tweet a great deal personally, um, few and far between, but I've had to get me, I've had to get my head around it, uh, however reluctantly. Uh, likewise, Facebook, we have to use that as well a little bit, but I, I'm not great at using it, you know, I, I'm really not. Um, and other forms of, of social media as well. Uh, we, we have to, we have to be on top of that now. And there are lots of people here who are better qualified and better able to, to deal with that than I am. Um, but it, it is important that we embrace that. We embrace technology uh, and use it because a lot of our listeners are now 
savvy with with social media you know especially our young listeners and we do have a lot of young listeners younger listeners than perhaps other areas of our output uh, which tends to have a, a higher age audience around about 55 60 whereas a lot of our sports people are our listeners are younger uh, they are into social media so we, we it's very important that we put interviews on Twitter on audio boo on Facebook um, and likewise breaking sports stories and things like that yeah really important you've already mentioned about the changes with social media and the likes do you believe there will be any more changes in the future which will cause a big stir in radio well I mean from a personal point of view we're not sure what what will happen with the BBC because the license fee is, is up for grabs in well it's under consideration for renewal 2016-2017 hopefully you know, from my point of view, I'm biased because I work for the BBC. We're hoping that that will stay as it is, and we can able we can continue to cover local sport as we do now uh, on local radio and provide a, an online service as well. But we don't know what what is long term personally here. In terms of generally the media, I think there will be further developments. I think we might get to a stage where maybe everything is is online and people don't listen to the radio at all. I don't know whether that will ever happen. People like listening to the radio when they drive around in the car. You can't really go on social media when you're driving. Uh, you shouldn't do that. Uh, it's not, not advised, by the way. Um, so, yeah, I can see changes continuing. Uh, things will develop and can continue to develop, get more sophisticated. Uh, the demands of the consumer will increase. People will want things not now, but yesterday. Everything needs to be quicker sharper there's capacity as well with you know with the size of files that you can put online now as well at one point we were a bit limited now you can put any any length of interview on there any program pretty much um, and that will continue I think yeah so I, I do see further changes in the future certainly when reporting on matches do you use social media whilst you're there in order to get the news out quicker <laughs> Not while I'm commentating because it's it's physically impossible. But beforehand, if there is time, if I'm presenting, I am incredibly busy on a match day. But I, we've got an idea that we a strategy of uh, reporters being at grounds, taking photographs, putting them on our Twitter site, um, getting them out there, trying to create that match day experience of what it's like. If you're not able to get there, if you're listening on the internet or in between two and three or you're, uh, you're sat at home, you're driving around in the car, you're not at the game, we want to try and paint pictures of, of what it's like to be at the match. So that means putting stuff on Twitter and on our Facebook site to build up a sort of uh, a catalogue, a diary of the day as it were. So we're encouraged to do that, uh, but obviously during the game we can't do that. After match is something that I think we need to be better at, but again, that's that can be difficult if you're busy. But um, back in the studio, meanwhile, my uh, erstwhile colleagues are, are very, very good at putting things online. So if, for example, you're sat at home, press the north end are down at uh, Yeovil, and you can't actually get to the game, you can listen to BBC Radio Lancashire, you can perhaps a final score with the sound off on the television, so you're following the, the other scores. And if you just want quick, instant, immediate uh, news of, of the other teams like Accrington, Blackburn Rovers, Burnley, Blackpool, etc., uh, then we will tweet those scores, any goal changes, we will tweet those immediately. So you can be sat there on your settee with your mobile phone in your hand or your tablet, watching final score on the television, listening to the radio, and it's all provided by the BBC, and, and, and you know, especially BBC Radio Lancashire.